Good evening. Welcome. It's Tuesday night. Actually, it's like Christmas Eve because I'm freaking drafting right now as we speak. It's that time of year. I have I have three drafts this week. So I am all in prepared to talk about this. I think I have a sure fire guaranteed winning plan for you to take into your draft. Is that something that appeals to you? If so, stick around. I got to tease you up a little bit. So, Chappie, Chaps Fantasy Chat, Tuesday nights, welcome all. Lenny Melnick Fantasy Sports Network, LennyMelnickFantasySports.com, the home of the legend. Man, it's great to have baseball minds in the chat room with you, interact and bouncing stuff off you. That's why I hope you guys enjoy this strategy, okay? But first, I want to tease you a little bit. We're going to talk about outfield tonight. And I bring this into play tonight because it's important to paint the picture as to just how deep this position is. And there's a strategy to be had here if you're thinking, okay? So bear with me. First off, over the last couple weeks, I've talked about holistically, position by position, um, how they rank strength-wise, right? Um, last week, I talked about the infielders, and we came to the conclusion. I gave it a, What I did is I gave it, gave it a holistic overview. The green category is elite statistics. The yellow category is average statistics. And below that, we won't talk about, right? So what basically the premise of this is you want the most you, mo- you want the most green for your buck, pun intended, right? Um, so, so as you look at this, first, I'll recap where we landed last week, because I know we have a lot of new faces in here. Welcome all, by the way. Andrea, welcome. Kevin, Taco, George. I, I love <laughs> George says this. Me- <laughs> I love George's humor. This show may get quarantined. Um, look. This is not a place where we're going to talk about Corona. We're not going to talk about politics. We're not going to talk about any of that bullshit right now because this is fun. Drafting's fun. Who cares about all that other crap? So let's talk. Let's talk about holistically last week what we figured out from these infield positions. We've I went through and I bucketed them, middle infielder, quarter infielder. First off, just to kind of paint the picture, the corner infield only have one player, only have one player with 20 plus stolen bases. But they had 24 players that had 30 homers. So that tells you, okay, that tells you you want to shy away from getting your steals at the corner or draft a player that can you can slot in there and create an advantage, a la Danny Santana. Someone who's going to steal you some bases at a position that's traditionally weak. That's what that tells you, okay? So, again, one corner infielder had 20-plus stolen bases last year. 24 of the top 38, that's how far I went, had 30 plus homers. I think I'm saying that right, right. Excuse me. Let me get to it. But this is a power position, is the point. In, in reverse, in the middle, you had eight players in the middle infield with 20 plus stolen bases. So you. <laughs> so you want to capitalize and get your speed from the middle infield position because there's on top of that there were 13 so there are 21 players in the middle infield position that had 10 plus stolen bases last year. You want to fill that position in so you're not putting undue stress onto your outfield, okay? 
On the flip side of that, in the middle, there were only, and you can, if you think about it from an overview perspective, there were only four middle infielders who had 100 RBIs last year. At first, you're like, well, that's kind of crazy. But then if you think about it, their speed guys are at the top of the order. So you can maybe use that to your advantage if you can get a middle infielder that does drive in home or runs. That gives you an added advantage. So for corners, you want to think about getting a guy like Scott Kingery or Danny Santana that you can filter down into those corners and get some speed there. And for middle, you want to really look at, you have to get speed in the middle. But you also want to try and capitalize and get an RBI guy there. So just by thinking at an overview level there, it kind of sets you up. As to what you want to do when you draft. Now I'll follow that up on a little bit. But I want to talk about the outfield position. So I did more outfielders because traditionally we keep more outfielders. I did 60 outfield. But the numbers were kind of similar. 19 players in the outfield position had 30 homers. 24 had 20 plus. So there's a lot of power in the outfield. <coughs> For stolen bases, there were 8 and 18. So there's a lot more to draw from here. But again, you're putting undue stress if you just try and get your stolen bases from the outfield position. So it's good to know that. I'm setting that up for later. Okay? But for right now, there's a lot of good average hitters. Above average is 300. There were 28 300 hitters in the outfield out of the top 60. That isn't the whole thing. Um, It isn't everybody, but it's the ones we're going to draft, right? Basically, that's kind of the premise I set it up under. Makes sense? So, again, 28 out of 60 is a pretty good percentage. Um, You want to take that into account. You don't want to get empty statistics. You don't want to sacrifice stolen bases for an empty average, Basically is the moral to that point, okay? So without further ado, it kind of sets you up for how you want to draft. I'm going to tell you about my slow draft that I did, and I use this this thought process, and I think I did pretty well with it. We'll share that after. I'm going to go over 24 outfielders first. Not all 24, but we're going to talk about the important ones, and we're going to talk about really... Thought process as we go through that. Okay, so I'm not here, I'm not going to sit here and tell you Ronald Acuna, blah blah blah. I'm not going to do that tonight. Okay, we all know Acuna's stats. I can give them to you. I'm thinking more of a thought process of value and ADP. Where can you? If look, I'm not inventing the wheel when I tell you if you have the first, second, or third pick, and Ronald Acuna's there, you take him. I'm not telling you anything, right? What I am telling you, though, is I think it's important to have your top four right here, right? Because in essence, this is your top four overall, possibly five or six if you really want to talk brass tacks. So I, here's how I view them, okay? Akuna one, Yelich two, Trout three. I think it's important to take note in the stolen base factor of this. I put Acuna and Yelich ahead of Trout because of the stolen base factor. I think Trout's 20 plus stolen base years are pretty much well behind him. That doesn't mean he's not one of the best players of all time. These guys are really good. I think it's important. People, you get these stupid website or uh, Facebook posts. Oh, I get the number two pick. If you don't know who you're going to pick second overall, you need to get out of the business, right? But that's fine. I get it. I'll tell you. No offense to anyone in here. I don't think anyone in here is having trouble coming up who they're going to take first overall. And if you do, I apologize. Akuna one, Yelich two. Trout three, Belly four, Mookie five. That's how I feel. 
Right, wrong, or indifferent. That's how I feel. <laughs> so, again, I'm not here to drill down on... I, I, I'm going to do some statistics where it's pertinent. Yelich, Yelich scares me too, but he just signed the contract. So, obviously, if they think he's healthy. He's on track to go opening day. I don't see... I, I don't see where that's anybody could get hurt at any time. I'm taking Yelich number two. I don't I don't take the injury risk into account because it literally <laughs> it literally could happen to any of these players, right? So so let's get into these talking points. I think it's important. Sixth outfielder. People need to take note because here's where it gets wacky. You see rankings all over the place. Sixth outfielder for me personally, 11.2 ADP is a first round pick. Juan Soto. His age, his discipline, his approach at the plate, and his upside all scream to me that he needs to be in this next spot right below these five elite players. Okay, I have him at sixth. I have him as a first round pick at the end of the first round. If you're in a dynasty league, I boost him up a couple more spots. The next guy, and this is where we start to get controversial. I'm just going to read the rest of this first. Well, so I do it like this. It's all based off of a 12 team league. We're doing outfield one, the first 12, outfield two, the second 12, outfield three, all the way down, okay? So this is our elite of elite. This is the best outfielders. Seven through 12, I'm going to go through them and then we'll talk about them one by one. This is great conversation though, talk, talk though, right? I mean, this is what we're, this can make or break your draft. Number seven. Starling Marte. I'm going to give you the ADPs later. Starling Marte. Eight, J.D. Martinez. Nine, I wrote this before the injury news, Aaron Judge. Ten, Bryce Harper, Andrea. Eleven, Austin Meadows. Twelve, Jordan Alvarez. Again, I wrote this before the knee injuries. That's the other thing. This is a battle of attrition. It is as important as anything to keep up with injury news as we're going into these drafts. I had just this week Trey Mancini come up with this crazy ailment and Willie Calhoun get hit in the jaw after I drafted them. It wasn't that I wasn't prepared. But things are fluid here. They're constantly changing. So if you're a good player, if you're a good player and you draft Willie Calhoun and that happens mid-draft, you better be looking at Nick Solak. You better be looking at viable backup options because it's important to know, hey, I might be without this guy for a little while. So 7 through 12, what do we think here? Let's compare some statistics with these guys real quick. Last year's stats. Uh, So first off, I moved Marte in ADP over top of J.D. Martinez, Aaron Judge, Bryce Harper. Due to the fact that Stolen bases. Isn't this all about stolen bases, really? At this draft value, at this price point, doesn't it really come? Yes, you need to contribute in the other categories to become viable. 25 stolen bases seems floor to me for Marte. There's a lot of things going on here, okay? So again, I'll preface this by saying I'm a de facto Pirates fan. I cheer for the Cubs. I left the Pirates because of the way they ran their organization. Way back when, I've been a Cubs fan for about 20 years now. 
more, 30 years, shit, I'm getting old. <clears throat> but, point, I've watched Starling Marte succeed 